man. It's K15. K15. Congratulations, you've made it one full school week of these videos. God bless you. Okay, day 15. Um, this is dealing with multi-step equations. Woo! Moving on up to the side. They're getting more difficult. We're going to look at those today. So I've got an equation up here. This is this goes beyond that two-step, this multi-step. I know that whenever I have this number set up like this with parentheses, I'm going to have to distribute first before I do anything else. So I'm going to take this 2 and multiply it by 6x to get 12x. And then I'm going to multiply 2 times 3, which gives me 6. Okay, equals 99. Forgot to draw my line. Sorry. Um, once I distribute, this is just a two-step equation. So really, this has got three steps all together. Um, I've already distributed. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this 6. Right now, it's being added. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Get 12x equals 93. Now, I still have to get that x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 12. And wherever you type that into your calculator, 93 divided by 12, you're going to get a decimal. You get 7.75 as your answer. Okay, don't let that freak you out. It's okay to get decimals. Okay, 7.75. If you are in doubt as to whether or not you did that correctly, we can plug it back into my original equation and check it. So I'm going to take this equation, only instead of x here, I'm going to put in 7.75. So 2 times 6 times 7.75 plus 3, and I want to see if that's going to equal 99. Okay, for this, this this part, solving this part, I would just type it in your calculator. Two parentheses, six times 7.75 plus three, close your parentheses and hit enter. Okay, wherever you do that, you get 99. And so that equation, that answer checks out. Okay. So here's another equation. And I know wherever you look at it, you're going to look at it and be like, there's variables on both sides of the equal sign, and maybe you mess up, it messed up. I didn't. I'm so sorry. But you can do this. I know you can. All right, so whenever we're solving these equations, um, we can move variables like this variable, this negative 5a, over to this side with this other a, and then move this five over here to this, with this negative seven. So sometimes, especially when you're beginning out with these equations, it's easier to take your variables to the left side and your constants or your regular numbers over to the right side. Some people find that easier. We can do either way, but we're gonna do that for, for these problems. So first I wanna get all of my variables together. Okay, I have this little old lonely a over here, and on the right side I have a negative 5a. So that negative 5a, if I want to move it to the other side, I'm going to have to do the inverse of what's already happening. It's a negative, so I'm going to add 5a to both sides. Now you have to be careful when you get over here. Don't add this 5a with that 5. They're not like terms. Okay, that doesn't have an a on it. Over here on the right side, negative 5a plus 5a gives me 0, so that crosses out over there. And if I take an a, which this is a 1a, right? 1a plus 5a gives me a 6a. And then I just drop down my plus 5, and my negative 7 comes down here. Now I need to get this 5 over here with this negative 7. Right now it's being added, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. 
I'm going to drop down my 6a equals negative 7 minus 5 gives me a negative 12. And if you need to, type that in your calculator. Negative 7 minus 5 gives me a negative 12. I'm still working on getting this a by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. Okay, here's another example with my variables on both sides of my equal sign. I'm going to draw my line. Um, I'm going to take my variables over to the left-hand side. And actually, I'm going to show you how to do this on the right-hand side, too, just so you can see it's the same. Um, I'm going to, this 8p right here, this is a positive 8p. So to move it to the other side, I'm going to subtract 8p. Okay? Crosses out over here. 8p minus 8p gives me 0. 5 minus 8p gives me a negative 3p. Now I drop down my minus 14, and what I'm left with over here is 4. Okay? So now I still, I'm going to work on getting p by itself. I'm going to add 14 to both sides. So negative 3p equals 18. Then for my last step, I'm going to divide by negative 3. And 18 divided by negative 3 is a negative 6. Now again, if you want to check that, you can sub it back in up here in the original equation and make sure that you did your work correctly. But here in just a second, and actually, I'm just going to rewrite this real quick. Okay. Now instead of taking my variables to the left side, I'm going to show you that you can take it to the right side. You're still going to get the same answer. We just have a tendency, because that's how we usually see it, is that my variable is always on the left side. But 8p is bigger than 5p. So in order to not be dividing on my last step by a negative number, I'm going to take my variable to the side that's larger, okay? So this 5p right here, I'm going to subtract it from both sides. Okay, 5p minus 5p gives me 0. I'm going to drop down my negative 14. 8p minus 5p gives me a 3p plus 4. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So negative 18 equals 3p. And then divide by 3. To get p by itself, negative 18 divided by 3 still gives me a negative 6.